how to get rid of histamine intolerance without just depending on an antihistamine medication. My name is Noor Zabdeh, I am a functional and integrative dietitian, and I help people overcome digestive and inflammatory conditions using diet, lifestyle, and supplements. And today we are going to talk about histamine intolerance. Histamine intolerance happens when you have more histamine in your body being produced or coming into your body more than the body's ability to clear it and get rid of it. So as you can see, there are two parts of the equation. And when we have more histamine in the body, we are going to experience the unwanted symptoms. So we're going to have sneezing and stuffiness and itching and post-nasal drip, maybe digestive uh, symptoms or uh, headaches or others. And in order to really get rid of these symptoms, we have to balance both parts of the equation. We have to lower the amount of histamine being produced and we also have to boost our ability to get rid of it and clear it and that's what we're going to talk about today. Histamine in the body can come from multiple places. First of all, you have histamine coming in from certain foods. So there are foods that contain high amounts of histamine. In another video that I'll share in the description, I talk about the high histamine foods to avoid and low histamine foods to eat. So make sure you watch it after this video. We also have gut bacteria that directly produce histamine into the gut. And then we have histamine being produced by mast cells in many parts of our body. And mast cells are going to produce histamine as a result of something else. So that could be certain foods that trigger histamine release. And I talked about these in my other video as well. There are certain gut pathogens and microbes such as dysbiosis or um, parasites or candida or SIBO that make your mast cells produce histamine. We also have in the environment, such as the grass and the trees and other environmental triggers. Stress can make your mast cells release histamine as well as mold and other medications. So in order to identify or solve the histamine intolerance puzzle, we have to look at all the reasons why we are producing more histamine. So what do we do about that part? First of all, we're gonna start with a low histamine diet. Now keep in mind, this is only a short-term solution until you identify the root causes and repair them and fix them. Because you can't solve your way out of histamine intolerance by just eating low histamine diet forever. It is restrictive, it eliminates many foods that are healthy and good for you, so only use it short term. The most important thing is to actually address the other reasons. So do you have gut dysbiosis? Do you have candida? Do you have SIBO? And the way to do that is you have to get proper testing done and make sure you get on the right protocols for these conditions. The environment, is there a way to reduce your environmental exposure? Are you cleaning dust properly, uh, cleaning ducts in your house? Can you get rid of carpet? Maybe avoid environmental triggers when it is the peak season for them. Stress, you can try to manage stress. We can't control and eliminate all stress in our lives, but we can manage how we respond to it. And when it comes to mold, do you live or work or have you in the past lived or worked in an area where you can see visible mold or maybe Sometimes you can't see it. Have you lived or worked in an area or in a place that had water damage? So this is also an important part of the big picture and the diagnosis or the solution. And also certain medications, you can have a conversation with your doctor. Do you need all the medications that you're on? Are there any other alternatives? Just a quick reminder, if you like this content so far, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so this content can reach other people who are looking for the same answers. Now let's talk about the ways our body can get rid and clear histamine. There are two enzymes that are responsible for this. DAO, diamine oxidase, which works mainly in the intestines. It's produced in the gut and works in the gut. And HNMT, histamine and methyltransferase. You don't have to memorize the name, but that is produced in our own cells to reduce histamine that is produced internally in our bodies. So in order to maximize and boost both enzymes, we have to look at the reasons why they stop working or they don't work properly and prevent these and make sure that they have the support that they need. So what interferes with DAO? First of all, eating a lot of high histamine foods is going to strain the DAO that you have. So we start with low histamine diet. Then we have gut infections and pathogens and dysbiosis, 
parasites, yeast, SIBO, even inflammatory gut conditions like colitis, Crohn's, and celiac disease. All of those create inflammation in the gut and the intestinal cells are the ones that produce DAO enzyme. So when we support gut health, when we repair the conditions that we have, when we build good healthy gut lining, we are going to enable the body to make adequate amount of DAO that we need to break down histamine. So as you can see, gut health is so crucial. We need proper gut health to make enough DAO so that we don't excessively produce histamine and that's why supporting gut health is foundation to overcoming histamine intolerance. DAO also needs important nutrients such as vitamin C and B6 and a proper zinc to copper ratio. There are certain medications that block DAO such as NSAIDs, steroids, um, antibiotics, metformin, antihistamines and others. So talk to your doctor and see if you can get off some of those medications and support these uh, things in other or natural ways. And then you have alcohol, energy drinks and black and green tea also block DAO, so we're going to reduce consumption of these. And for some people, we know that they are born with a genetic variation where they don't make enough DAO. And in this case, these are the people who would say, I've always had allergies or I've always had uh, stuffiness or itchiness from as long as I can remember. Sometimes they even have family members who have that. And if that's the case for you, sometimes accepting and identifying this and finding ways to overcome it is going to be a really important part of your healing journey. Now let's talk about HNMT enzyme. This enzyme needs certain nutrients to function properly. So these are B2, folate, B12, and magnesium. This enzyme actually depends on a process in the body called methylation. So anything that disrupts methylation is going to be a problem. Now that's a big topic we're going to have to go into deeper later, but things like free radicals, when you don't have enough antioxidants in your body, you're exposed to a lot of toxins from your environment, you're under a lot of stress, or when you have gut infections, all of these are going to affect methylation, which is then going to affect HNMT enzyme. There are also certain medications that block or reduce the effectiveness of this enzyme. We also know that there are some people with genetic variation that prevent proper methylation. And again, like the DAO genetic variation, when you know that or you suspect that, you can have the proper uh, strategies and the nutrients in your body in order to support this process. And if you suspect that you have that genetic variation, you can adjust and modify your lifestyle in order to support your body and provide the nutrients for these uh, genes and the enzymes to work a little bit more efficiently. And you may have to be a little bit more diligent than someone else who doesn't have it. And that's okay, and that's part of who we are. What are we going to do short term and long term to overcome histamine intolerance? First of all, we're going to start with a low histamine diet in order to identify whether this is a problem or not, and then just ease the pressure on your own enzymes and help you reduce the symptoms so you can make progress on the other aspects. You can take external DAO, so the enzyme that breaks down histamine in the gut. There are certain supplements on the market that contain this DAO enzyme, and you can take them when you're eating high histamine foods or generally with any meal uh, because your body may be producing histamine a little bit more than ideal or more than usual. Now keep in mind that these supplements are made from pigs. So if that's something you're not comfortable with, you can switch to skip that step or you can focus on pea sprouts because they also have DAO enzyme. You can also reduce the things that block the DAO. So simple one is to reduce alcohol, energy drinks, and uh, to not overconsume black and green tea. There are also supplements that help reduce mast cells from overreacting to a lot of uh, triggers. So these are things like quercetin, vitamin C, and bromelain. You can also drink fresh ginger tea and nettle tea, and they also help calm the mast cells. You may take antihistamine medications, but that's only for a short-term solution and only maybe at seasonal times. Here's why. So there are receptors for histamine in all parts of the body, and we experience histamine intolerance symptoms when histamine binds to the receptor. So think of histamine 
as the key and the receptor is the keyhole. So antihistamine medications, what they do is they actually block the keyhole. They don't reduce the amount of histamine being produced in your body. And in fact, you may actually produce more histamine because of taking antihistamines because the body is sensing that something is off and it needs to make more and more. So what happens is you, the minute you stop taking an antihistamine medication, you have a whole lot of histamine circulating in the body and all the symptoms will come back. That could explain why sometimes people have to increase the dose or switch from one medication to another because some medications stop working. So if you need it for a few weeks in the year, that's fine. But if you depend on antihistamines and you have to take a couple every single day or else you'll wake up with mucus and itching and, and hives and headaches, something is not right. And you really have to do this uh, digging to find out what the root causes are for you. Now for long term, let me ask you something. If you have a faucet that's open, would you go and grab towels to collect the water and dry the floor? Or do you first try to close the faucet? And this is what we want to try to do for long term histamine solution. We need to find why there's histamine spilling into your body, especially if you're already on a low histamine diet and it's still not helping. Why is your body producing all this much histamine? So we need to close the faucets. This may be a simple journey for some people, but for others, it may take months or years and it may take several providers in order to address all the different things that trigger mast cells. So if you are looking for someone to help you focus on the gut and the digestive component of it, you feel free to reach out. I'll put my information in the description. And this is exactly what I do with my clients. I get them tested for food sensitivities. We do gut assessment. We check for these uh, conditions that I had mentioned and I put them on a supplement and diet and lifestyle plan in order to overcome these issues. For the meantime, stick with a low histamine diet while you investigate, while you're looking for other solutions and long-term solutions. Try to reduce your stress, try to reduce exposure to toxins and chemicals. Eat an anti-inflammatory diet as much as you can and try to get good quality of sleep because all of these lifestyle strategies are going to help you overcome histamine intolerance. Now, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and leave me your comments. What is the one aha or one thing that you learned from this video that you didn't know? And I'll come back and answer your questions later and I'll see you next time.